Well, welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Life Insurance Academy podcast. Today, we are not in our own studio. We're at a studio. Yes. Red Remote Studio. We're at Secure Agent Marketing Studio. It's pretty sharp. Springfield, Missouri, the mecca of insurance. Mm-hmm. It is the it mecca, is, right? Isn't it? Yeah. After this morning's meeting, didn't it feel like the mecca? The, this compound is amazing. It is amazing. Is that the right word, compound? I would call That's it an accurate compound. word. Complex, yes. compound. Yeah, yeah. very cool. Yeah. Campus. We Campus. may or may not be yeah. bringing the most listeners to their studio for the first time. Yeah. That's man. right. Yeah. That's That's big right. Land. You're, you're welcome. <laughs> and today we have a very special opportunity to go live and unscripted with the one and only, all the way from Tulsa, Oklahoma, two hours down the road. Mr. Marlon Faulkner, welcome to the Life Insurance Academy podcast. Marlon, welcome Thank back. You. Yes. Dude, you made a big impact previously with our listeners, and you had some. Uh, we got some great video content of you, and those uh, podcast episodes that you did resonated, man, not just around the country, but around the world. And wow. We've heard a tremendous amount of feedback, and it's a pleasure, man, to get in the room with you today. Well, and so we're going unscripted. This is a first for us. This, this unscripted moment is a first for Ish. us. Ish. Really? Ish. Ish? Really? Ish. Bring me back. Take me back. Like we need that time machine thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's the spirit fingers is what got me. <laughs> it just really just took everything out. No, I'm talking about, you know, the, I think the best thing the listeners love about us is that we're raw and real. We're yeah. not, we're never fully scripted oh, anyways, right, right, especially right. when mm-hmm. you have you in here. I know. It's we nuts. never know what's going to come It gets a little wild. Now. That's, That's right. true. So it, it's always some type of, uh, you know, it's, it's always raw and it's exciting <laughs> yeah. and fun. Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about sales. We're going to be talking about agency development. We're going to be talking about winning, success, and we're just going to let it flow. So if any of those have an interest to you, then this is your segment. If you stayed on till now, you can stay on till the end. That's right. You're going to, you're going to get some gold today. So let's just talk. We're going to let you in on our conversation about what's really going on to be successful in this business. Yeah. So our, I think we were talking at the beginning of this just about this idea of winning and sales and business and maybe some building. And I think Zach had a couple questions. I mean, winning is a funny thing, right? Mm-hmm. Like you don't just you don't just start winning. I think you have to be introduced to winning. You have to see winning. You have to experience winning. You have to know what it feels like, know what it smells like, um, even at the performance level. But it's it's the grit. R- winning truly comes from what nobody sees. It's, it's this positive self-talks you have. It's the rolling around in your bed because you can't sleep because you really want to get get that item or, or win that award or mm. whatever it is. It's, rolling it's, around in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> what got me. <laughs> rolling around in your bed. You can't sleep at night, right? You know, you have that, that, that anxiety going that you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're just fired up. You're ready to go. Or it's the time you spend in the gym or preparing yourself or reading the book. Like that, that's what winning truly is, you know? But, you know, we were talking about uh, what to talk about on this podcast, really, and, and we were talking about winning, and I heard Marlon say something earlier, and it was uh, there's a difference between, or is there a difference between going out there to win and going out there not to lose? Mm. Oh, that's... Ooh. Did I say Ooh. that? Yeah. <laughs> you say a lot of stuff. I don't know, but that's my the bell. thought that it elicited. <laughs> that's yes. the thought yes. that was elicited from that statement. Well, and I'll tell you why I said that. Again, thank you so much for having me on. I'm Roger, Chris, Zach, you guys are some of my favorites getting to be on the 100th episode. And I think it was 43. You may be the only one that now has your third shot yes. on the podcast. Well, you may be the only one. Well, I was thinking about getting tattooed on me every time I was on a special like episode, 100 episode. So <laughs> yeah. I'm thinking about getting those tattoos. So I may have to yeah. limit that. But uh, no, just extremely grateful for you guys uh, because of what you embody is this persona of we want to help people that really – um, need help, but maybe don't know what, how to ask or the questions mm. to ask. And so when we started to talk about what is winning, the first thought that came to my mind was uh, most of my life I was living not to lose mm. instead of winning. Because when you talk about winning, Zach, what I think about is I don't like winning. I love it, first of all. But I love the, <laughs> you like that? Yes. Uh, when I play a board, you were wondering where I was going. But number two, I love the feeling of winning. Mm-hmm. Because what it does is it gives me just a little boost that I could go another day, that I could do something else, whether it's winning with my family, whether it's winning in business, whether it's winning with myself. Yeah. Like I took a cold shower this morning and I didn't have to because nobody was around, nobody to talk to, but that's a win for me. And how much more confident, it sounds weird, but I get out of the shower more confident. And that's not because you didn't have hot water. 
No, I didn't. That's a choice. And there was a time I didn't have hot water. (laughs) So take it hot. We got to give context to this. Sometimes people are joining in for the very first time. They're first of all saying, who is this guy, Marlon, and why is he having to take a cold shower? I take a cold shower every day. Yeah. (laughs) I got got a question for you, Marlon. Yes, sir. So that's that's a very good point there, right? If somebody's in the car right now, you got a new agent, somebody's listening, thinking about joining the business, or maybe they've been in the business for 10 years, right? Um, How do they know if they're the ones that are winning or they're the ones just not losing? Trying not to lose, yeah. I, I think, yeah, that's good for you me. You said you love you love winning. I love winning. How do you do? You love not losing. No, I I hate not losing. How do you know the difference? <laughs> I guess for me, the difference is when I look in the mirror, when I when I lay my head down at the end of the day, I know if I've won. You know when you give a hundred percent. Like we were at the gym this morning, Roger. Yeah. There were some times when the trainer wasn't looking at me, <laughs> I wasn't giving a hundred percent. But you know what? He's very good at Jimmy. He kept coming back. He kept coming back, and he would say my name, even if I didn't mm-hmm. think he was looking at me. Here's why, Zach, because people always want to be watched. People always want to know that they're doing it for somebody or something. And so for me, when I lay my head down at night, I know that I've won the day. If I know truly I can look in the mirror and say, you gave it all. Because people think it's about the stuff that you get. or The, the feeling I have is if I've given 100%, mm-hmm. I've won. The reason I've won is because, and, I'll, and I'll, I'm going to throw you a curveball, to me winning is about doing the activity not about the results. See, if I go to work out today and I don't lose 10 pounds, that doesn't mean I lost. That means I'm in the process of losing weight. If you go to the gym and you lose 10 pounds that day, you need to see a doctor immediately. <laughs> like, immediately. You're, you're probably right. It depends on how hard you work. If, if I stay in the gym for but, 20 hours. And I, yes. Yeah, but I think, and, and I can tell you, I've, I felt that way. And I think people do feel that way, like that they didn't win. They went to the gym and they went home and they looked like the same person Yes, because they wanted that result immediately. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, That's a really good point. Yeah. Because in, in, in in business we think, well, if I don't have what such and such have, Mm -hmm. when I met Roger, he has a, we're, we have insurance companies, but he has a a podcast and he has a coaching program. If I compare myself to that, I can easily look in the mirror and say, gosh, you're not winning. You're losing. Mm -hmm. But if long as I know that I'm giving a hundred percent, you know you, because the one person you can't lie to, that you lie to more than anybody else, is yourself. Yeah. So it's really the difference between giving it all versus giving enough. Ooh. That's the difference. That well, that, that was a short right podcast, guys. <laughs> yeah. I guess that was it. We're Thank you guys for joining yeah, today. We'll be back next week yes. on another episode. Yeah. It, it really is, because I, I know personally, um, you know, and we, we may go through this for a week. We may go through this for, through a, a day. It may be when you're reading a book or self-help book, or really anything in life, there's a difference in people that are good and talented or maybe really quick at learning things, but they just do enough to make six figures. They just do enough to be the number one on the leaderboard instead of being number one by a mile. Yeah. The difference is is enough versus giving enough or giving it all, really. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, well, and by way of way. context, I want to I bring this back because we got some new listeners that are on today. If you're listening and you don't know who this guy Marlon is, I want to yeah. give some context to that Thank because you. this idea of winning just didn't happen overnight, this, mm-hmm. this, this, this uh, perspective that you have now, right? Yeah. So uh, Marlon's been on a few episodes. Marlon is a seven-figure agency owner out of Tulsa. Uh, got it, been, was in the insurance business for many years prior to having any success. Had moderate and limited success with multiple companies. Yes. And I heard you say this morning, you always blamed it on the company. Yes. That it was the opportunity. It wasn't you. Yes. And until a friend of uh, yours from the past reached out and said, hey, let's let's do this together and start speaking different words into you yes. to let you see something different that was possible, did you actually start making a change? Mm-hmm. Got into business. You admitted that you weren't the best salesperson in insurance sales, life, primary life oh. insurance sales. But you started recruiting, started started selling both of those at the same time. And today, I don't know what your what your company does, what your business does. Do you want to share a little bit about what your business looks like today for perspective for the listeners? Yeah, we have um, we have about 200 agents on our team. We had about 80 writers, 88 writers last month, which was a record. We are growing faster than we've ever grown before. Here's why: because more people have needs that they need answered right now. Mm-hmm. Like people are searching more than than ever right now. Mm-hmm. And I don't think it's like when I was searching. I don't think they think it's the company's fault. I think they're just looking for a place they can fit in. Mm-hmm. Or they're looking for a place where they can stand out. Mm-hmm. And um, when I now um, we just we have ten managers on our team, um, which means we have people doing at least 
fifty thousand of production mm-hmm. um, with at least seven writers a month. A month. Yeah. So we have ten of those, and by the end of the year, our goal is to have seventeen, and we're going to make the million dollar march. But it's not about what it used to be about when I got started. It was about the money, the glory, the things that I could have. Now it's about the life change I'm seeing in other people's mm-hmm. families. Um, the difference is, Roger, I, I went on about a two-year hiatus. I hit the top of the company with Symmetry Financial Group. Mm-hmm. That's who I'm affiliated with. Yeah. And I kind of got depressed. Here's why, because mm-hmm. I didn't know what was next. Like One of my mm-hmm. favorite quotes is when Tiger Woods won his first Masters, they ask him, you know, did you expect this? And he actually said, yes, I've dreamt this my whole life. Mm-hmm. He said, the scary thing is I don't know what's next. I never dreamt after I won. Mm-hmm. And that was me. I didn't mm-hmm. do that. And going back to what you talked about, Zach, was giving enough or giving it all is the difference between being talented and being committed. So I've been talented my whole life, but the wealthiest people I know aren't the most talented, they're the most committed. And so when I give it all, that means I'm committed. Mm -hmm. And so for most of my life, Zach, kind of back to what you were saying is I never gave, I was never really committed. You know, people always say, I want to dip my toe in the water. Well, I, I finally dipped my whole body in the water. And so now, Roger, what's happening is the growth from our team is not coming from me. It's coming because other people are rising up into the people they've been called to be. Other people are raising teams. Other people are making more money than they've ever made before because they're committed to a cause, to a direction that we're going to my job is just to be the visionary. I love that. When you say that, all I hear is winning is a choice. Mm. It is, yeah. Because it is. Because I mean, how how many how many years were you in the insurance business before you made that decision to actually be, be win? Good? Yeah, win. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, over fifteen years. You were in the business for fifteen years. <laughs> hey, fifteen years, Marlon. In year fourteen, how much money were you making? Uh, I made that was one of my biggest years. I made thirty one thousand dollars that year. One of his biggest Family years after four, fourteen years. Family, a dog, four. a cat. Do you hear that, everyone? 14 years in the business, $31,000. Would you have stayed? I probably would have quit. Yeah. <laughs> but he didn't quit. I didn't quit. To your credit, you didn't quit. Mm-hmm. What happened? Well, I knew I had it in me. You know when you have it in you. You know when you have the bug. You know you're just waiting to get that breakthrough. And um, I had a man that I met that believed more in my dreams and goals than I believed in my own. Mm-hmm. And I met a man, Nate Offert, you've had on the show, mm-hmm. uh, my mentor. Um, just started to say, he said, Really, the first phone call, he called me up. I was homeless at the time. And he said, man, you're really talented, but you're lazy. <laughs> That's see, the truth. Most yeah. people get offended and see winning is a choice, but so is being offended, Zach. Yeah, oh, you're, yes, everything's a choice. Winning and is so a choice, and moment, so is being offended. Did you hear that? Guys, like, there's so much gold in there. Like, oh, my god, That's gosh. a book title, man. Yeah. <laughs> so Look, when, that's when he, a book title. You he, I need to write that down. Winning is when, a choice, and so he, is being offended. Uh, being offended is a choice. So when he said that, you know what I'd done most of my life? When someone put me down, I got offended. Mm-hmm. But you know what I decided to do in that moment? I decided that it was no longer about Marlon. It was about my wife. It was about my kids. It was about the dog and the cat. <laughs> and... That they It's never really about the dog and cat. Well, you don't know my dog and you don't know my cat. But I don't care. It, it was it was really about I that. love my dog, but it's never gonna be about my dog. <laughs> it was really about enough is enough for Marlon. Mm-hmm. When are you really gonna be the provider that you told your wife you would be at the altar? When are you really gonna be the father that you always dreamed about being? When are you really gonna be the son that you you know you've been called to be and the leader? And at that moment I had a decision. Mm-hmm. I could be offended or I could not. I could win or I could not. And I decided to not be offended and I leaned into that. Yeah. That's what most people won't do. They right. run from adversity. Mm-hmm. I leaned into it for the first time in my life and it was unbelievable. Now, obviously, uh, you said you had four kids, a wife, 31,000. That's not making much money. No. So when you, when you were transitioning to make this change, were there some factors at home? What was the environment like there? Because sometimes winning is perspective and a lot of people that are listening right now or watching they have stuff yeah and some of that stuff is relationships yeah some of that stuff is financial yeah. mistakes yeah mm-hmm. some of that stuff is bad choices in the yeah. past uh some broken relationships possibly stress at home in a marriage 
Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't have any of those things going on, surely. <laughs> no, man. He was. He had a cat and dog. What more do you need, man? <laughs> right. You didn't have I any buy, of those things going I on. Like, was, you, your environment was perfect, <laughs> ready to set up to, to win, right? I was at the episode. I, I just got done being homeless. I moved back in. You guys know when money's not right at home, nothing is right. Mm-hmm. I wasn't a good father to my kids. I wanted to be better. And it was chaos mm. at home. But here's what I had. I had a wife that I didn't believe believed in me, but she really did. Like one of the things that happens when you really, when you're not winning, you have, a, lot, a lot of times people have a ten- tendency to withdraw. And what I did was I leaned in. I leaned into what, I asked my wife, why am I struggling? She told me, listen, if you ever want to know the truth, just ask your wife. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> that, yeah. She told me, well, you're, you're lazy. You don't do what you say you're going to do. You don't uh, work hard. You don't. And again, after Nate Alford told me that and I chose not to be offended, then why would I be offended with my wife said? So I listened to her. Um, and it was hostile, Roger, because we had to spend money on leads or spend money on our electric bill. And I told my wife the difference was now, hey, we're not going to have electricity for a few days, but I've got to buy these leads. Why? Because I bought into a system. Mm. I saw you swallow. <laughs> I just saw you swallow when he said electric yeah, bill or leads. That's a big decision. That's, yeah. That's, yeah. that's all in. That's all in. A hundred percent. But when you're... Some people would say it's stupid. Yeah, and, and, and most of the stupid people I know, well, I'll say this this way. How are you going to get out of that cycle if you don't? Like, that's exactly right. If you, you don't, don't go like, all in. I, I don't know a businessman that's that's successful that hasn't gone all in at some point in his life somewhere. Here's, I just before don't. we get too far off of it, you mentioned something and it keeps sticking out to me, right? Because you said um, when, you, when you made that decision and, and Nate and, and your wife and these people told you you're lazy, that you, you, know, you don't do what you say you're going to do, and you said, I made the decision to not be offended there. But I'm sure a lot in your previous life, you were offended every single time. How, how did you make that decision? What, what in you just did let you just say, at this moment, right. when this dude is calling me out, my wife's calling me out, like, I'm not going to make that decision. I've got offended. to follow up to that too because I think that's a powerful question. Um, and did you still have emotions in the moment? Like that, that's a pivotal moment. Right well, I did, and this is a really simple answer for me. Because I lived my life the way I had, I decided in that moment you can be right or you can be rich. <laughs> yeah. I'd been Someone right. must have told you that. Obviously, yeah. that, was a, that was a message that was communicated to you because when you're in that moment of I'm offended, the world is against me, I'm losing, I don't have what it takes – that's kind of a weird anomaly thought. I can be right or I can be rich. Well, it's, it's not when I'd done some personal development. Like I'd, mm-hmm. I'd read, I'd read like a half a chapter of, of uh, Thinking Grow rich, rich. Yeah, Thinking Grow Rich or Rich Dad Poor <laughs> yeah, Dad so I could yeah. tell people mm-hmm. how to be wealthy. But it wasn't a hard choice because months earlier I was asleep in my car and I'd ask a friend to borrow, and I don't, I don't share this a lot, um, to borrow his pistol because I said I needed protection because when you – Man, sleeping in homeless shelters, people have nightmares. People have a lot of mental disorders. Mm-hmm. So I just didn't feel safe. So I asked my buddy for a, a, a gun, and he, he let me borrow that gun. And at one point, I thought about taking my life. And the only reason I didn't was because I didn't want my kids to come to a closed casket because I didn't know how I was going to do it. But I just was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm-hmm. And so when that decision came, it was a no-brainer that I was almost at a point of taking my life, so I had to go the opposite direction. See, rock bottom is a great place to build a strong foundation. Mm. And I realized I couldn't go any further down. My yeah. clothes were in my car, I'm eating out trash cans, I'm begging money from Jeez. people. So that, that wasn't a hard decision. Here's the problem in most people's life, you haven't hit rock bottom yet. See, the worst mm. thing in life is to be a middle class American because yeah. you, this is what I used to think. Well, at least I'm not poor like those people. I'm not rich like all the wealthy people and, and all the evil people. And I'm not going to steal money. But I'm not poor like the homeless people. That's a trap. See, I wasn't okay because that's not who I was created to be. Hmm. Yeah. That's strong, man. I do think uh, like this this ebb and flow of the conversation uh, it can be a little tricky because uh, it's almost like I'll say it this way. It's almost like getting an allergy shot. You know, as a kid, I used to get allergy shots, you know, and you get inoculated and you listen to podcasts and you do these things. But I have to tell you, if you're going to make a change, you have to, while you're driving, a lot of people listen to this while they're driving, Yeah. you have to digest this conversation for you personally. Mm-hmm. You have to. Like, 
what are you committed to? Yeah. Like you, if you are sitting in your car and you're driving and you're getting ready to run your leads, or maybe you got a late start because you, and you didn't tell anybody you got a late start, right? Yeah. And Well, you don't want to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What have you committed to? Because <laughs> believe it or not, you're committing to something. Always. Oh, Chris, you, man. <laughs> you are committing to something and you have to decide. If you wrote down throughout the day, every excuse you told yourself and just read it at the end of the day, <laughs> everybody would be just... Just lost for words, you know. Yeah. And the the thing I appreciate about Marlon so much is to see his level of success and see yeah. the type of person he is and his smile and his energy. Just love being around him. But every time he speaks, every excuse I've ever had is is gone completely. <laughs> like like you, you can't yeah, even destroys you them. can't even say I got it's a like, headache. I need to change the. I got a flat tire. I for need excuses. To, I need to get an oil change. Like yeah. or yeah. you know, He's got a tank. I can't. Somebody couldn't watch my dog. You know, you know? The, the the heater guy's coming to 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 give mm. my you know my furnace a service. Like, the alternator like, went out of my car. This dude's eating leftover fries out of a garbage can. Yeah. You know, and and sleeping in a car. Yeah. Like, like with a pistol in his hand. Like, and he told to his family mm. that he's not. They're not. I'm, babe. I'm not gonna pay this electric bill. I'm just telling you, we're, <laughs> we're gonna be in the dark for a while. Open the window shades. It's Candles. happening. I'm buying these leads. Mm-hmm. And. If you aren't working your leads right now the way he worked that one batch of leads, yeah. then what are you doing? Yeah. Like, like, you don't have to be in that hole. And, and like, mm-hmm. just any excuse is, is mm-hmm. absolutely gone. Like, I've, I've got a question for you. As you were going through that, I thought about this. <laughs> Heather, of course we know Heather. We got to spend time on the beach in the Dominican Republic with you guys yeah. hanging out uh, at our Power Producers event, by the way. Um, which anyone can join us. There's, right. there's a little plug for coming that. Up. Right. It's coming up soon. Um, Cabo this year but we got to spend time with Heather beautiful human being mm-hmm. you said she was real with you and she still told you the truth but there's some people on here whose spouse is frustrated mm-hmm. to the point where it they feel like no matter what they say <laughs> nothing's going to change because that person never follows through they yeah. never do what they say they're not living up to their potential yeah. they always take the shortcut how do you start to bring back on side someone at home yeah, that's really that good. is not on side now. What what did you start doing that made Heather say, "Okay, this time it's different." It's okay yeah. if we and don't what, have electricity, and it's okay that's if good. we don't have electricity for week three or four now. If we're making this decision because that's I good. see something is changing. What were those things that started that you started to do to start bringing your family back on side where they started to believe in the potential that's of Marlon? Great, great question. What were some of those things? Well, number one, you said it this morning in, in the sales training. Mm-hmm. People have to see what they want to be. My That's wife right. started to watch me get up at four o'clock in the morning and listen to audios and do personal development and do things that most people don't do. Like I, I'm not a wake up at four o'clock in the morning guy. But the other thing was that, um, I really think that, man, that's, that's, like, Say it again, because I, I had a thought in my brain. Say it one because more time. it's not it, it like the action doesn't take place overnight, and then your family's all behind you the next day. Like no. because of a repeated pattern of frustration. Usually, when I say there's listeners and you're on the call and and, and you're listening to this uh, this podcast today, like there's stuff in, in lots of us have stuff in our past, financial, oh, relationship really, wise, yeah. baggage, and so they see a you pattern of behavior, in this in pattern of behavior mm-hmm. in this paradigm, yeah. and now yeah. you're trying to pull out of that, and you need their support. Yeah. You want their support. What steps did you start That's taking cool. that your family started to realize? Okay, this time it's different. What are those steps that our listeners are going to have to start taking to bring their family on side to elicit yeah. that support from them? So that, that, that brought me back to it. So one of the things I did, and I don't know who taught me this or why I did it, but I started making deadlines. Mm-hmm. So when I moved back in with my wife from being homeless, I said, give me 90 days to mm-hmm. prove that, it, that I can make this work. Nice. And then I would say, okay, in the next 30 days, I'm going to bring in so much income. And I'd say in the next three months, we're going to recruit so many people. And so I put deadlines on it. Most people don't put deadlines on their goals. Yeah. You know what? Most people don't put go- deadlines on their dreams either. Mm-hmm. And so what she watched me do was put deadlines on my goals and dreams and then begin to hit them because I knew if I didn't, I wasn't going to be married. And the only option I had when I was homeless was death or figure it out. See, here's the secret. One of my buddies, Aaron, Ayers Newsom, said this on my team call the other day. You got to figure it out. How many leads do I need to buy? <laughs> you got to figure it out. Hey, what do I say to this person when they, when they say that I want to think about it? 
Hey, you got to figure it out. Yeah. Hey, what do I do when I don't have any money, but I need to buy leads? Hey, you got to figure it out. So my wife watched me put deadlines on things and she watched me become a figure it out guy. Mm. I had to figure it out because if I didn't, I knew what the alternative was. It was yeah. death. Yeah. Most people yeah. just won't put constraints or restrictions on their goals and dreams because they think they have forever. Case in point, I had yeah. an agent the other day that I was talking to and she said, I, I talked to her about happiness. I said, you just don't seem happy to me. Mm. And she says, I'm getting there. Mm. And I said, well, I need to know in the next 30 days what it, where, what it is. Because if you just say, well, I'm getting there, where's there? Mm. Put a deadline on things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you wanna grow, Back yourself into a corner and figure it out. So obviously, you're, you're not that, right? I saw you destroy some ribs last night. So I, I know you're eating a little bit better. <laughs> I know you're eating and you better. Think, and you didn't get him out of the garbage can. He's bougie now. No, yeah. he's, he's bougie now. He's that's bougie a, now. That's a he's, like, he's, he's drinking flat water here, but it's he's, really Pellegrino. Yeah, he's I know. Drink Pellegrino, yeah. Right. But like when you're going through that and you hit that corner, your back's against the wall, you don't have any choice but figure it out or death, right? <laughs> or death. <laughs> that's what he said. That, that, that's it. it. Is. it yeah. is. That's a Marlin quote, right? Yeah. Yeah. But moving through that and having success and having – have you felt your mindset let up at all or have you given yourself any, any grace or has your fire died down because you have a little comfort because your house is now – a lot bigger than what it used to be that, you know, your dog's yeah. probably eating good food now. Like <laughs> eating ribs. Like, has it changed for you? Or do you, do you, how do you remind yourself of that hunger or that fire to keep it going? So you don't get complacent or anybody gets complacent after battling that. Well, I'm human. So that, that complacency does set it. I'm a human being. And I know a lot of people don't think I am, but I am. I'm human. You cut me all bleed. You tickle me all laugh. I, am, I know feel that. I, I, know. <laughs> I love how he speaks now. Um, but the the thing that was incredible was when I took my focus off of what I talked about earlier, which was Roger Short said this earlier. I've, I've said it three times today because I want to remember it. There's only three immediate needs that people have: external, internal, and philosophical. And I stopped with my internal need. My internal need was to take care of my family and help people take care of theirs. Hmm. Well, once my family was taken care of, you know what? I left my foot off the gas and yeah. we're good. And I looked around and I might live in a 5,000 square foot house and drive a 2020 Escalade, but I know people live in 10,000 square foot houses and drive Rolls Royces. It wasn't about the stuff, but what it was about is I still got more in me. And not only that, if I stop here, am I setting a ceiling for someone else that's following me that they have to stop here? So Zach, what I did was I stopped looking at my goals and I started looking at other people's goals and their dreams and saying, you know what? They can't reach their goals if I stay here. So for me to be great, I have to be in Edward Pritchett's shoes. Mm -hmm. And for, for you to be great, I need you to be in my shoes. And then I need you to replace me. So what I did was I created what, what most restaurants like a McDonald's or a Subway, I created duplication so that my dreams never quit. And now I'm back to putting deadlines, not on my goals, but on on my, my, the people that are following me. I love that. And I'm real with them. Here's what most people are not in America. They're not real. They're, they, they yeah. Not just in America, in the world. I need someone to be real. My life changed because my wife was real with me because mm -hmm. Nate Offert was real with me. Yeah. And then we want people to sugarcoat it to us. So what do you recommend for listeners? If, we, if they need people that are real with them, what do you recommend to them? Because they might not have people who are being real with them right now. Or they may still be getting offended. Mm. Well, I, I, that's good. You guys are good. Your questions are so good. Like I'm sweating over here. I'm hoping not to mess up. I'm glad. Well, this we is just a conversation. I know. I mean, this is. I'm this like, is. Line. I'm We're being just, real with you is, right now, Marlon. These this are is, real questions. This is be the content. Be yeah, the content, is. and you are being. I mean, we are being the content. He don't here. want real questions. Here's what. Yeah, I don't want real questions. I want scripted. <laughs> I want fake questions. Here's the thing that I found. Even when I met a Roger and a Chris and a Zach, I'm always seeking. For more so i think in life you get what you look for like when i when i was when i was on social media all the time when i was watching television all the time all the news and junk, you know what i did i complained a lot you get what you look for in life. Yeah, that's right dude yeah and so if you want someone really like just start looking for them. or call listen call me up i will be really real with you <laughs> 
for the price of about $5,000. I'll be really real. It'll get real, real, yeah, real, real. Really real, because <laughs> here's why. I, I joke, but if, if you have nothing, in, no skin in the game, it doesn't matter if I'm real with you or not. Yeah. See, it's, it's not, well, I have to find someone that's going to be real to me. I have to be someone that needs to be dealt with. There were always people out there that wanted to be real. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't a person that was ever listening. Once I started listening, mm -hmm. I found a Roger. I found a Nate Offord. I found a Brad Smith. I found a Brian Delaney. I found an Edward Pritchett. I found a Cody Askins mm -hmm. because I was looking. I, I became a person that – so stop looking for the right opportunity and look for the, per, look for the person that, that, that people are looking for to be in the right opportunity. Stop – looking for the best job and be the most qualified applicants. You mean it's not about the best leads? Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> you know this uh you mean this, it's not about the best leads? <laughs> this conversation Dang. is a is a cool this may be one of the most impactful podcasts we've had. I, I really sense that mm. because it it moves from, from winning, you know, uh winning where you're you're eating something out of a garbage can, you know, you're holding a pistol and that decision to put the pistol down as a win. Like, oh. dang it, man, I can feel yeah. that. I yeah. feel that, yeah. man. Like yeah. there are people who are out there doing something and they're, you know, they're trying to figure out their life and maybe they're listening to our podcast for the first time. Like yeah. that's a win. That's a win. Next step. You're calling somebody and saying, I need some help. Yeah. You know, this is, this is the next step. Like I, I want to make something in my life and I'm going to reach out to somebody yeah. and say, I'm going to decide to be somebody and impact other people to where this is the cool thing, Marlon. To where you see this winning thing, where it's it has a wake to it. Yeah. It's it's a wake that look at him. I messed him up, man. Yeah. Like there's a wake to it that's pulling people and changing their lives. And you're saying you get to do that too. You yeah. get to do that too. And this just I mean just that word three little letters win, win. Can it has such ripple an effects, man. It has ripple people. effects that yeah. keep going, yeah. that keep going, that yeah. keep going, that keep going. Yeah. And uh, the decisions that you make today. Um, and I mean, Chris, I, I go back to what you, what you come back to, you know, like it all starts with our thoughts, Yeah. right? And mm -hmm. thoughts are things, thoughts, thoughts are, are things. things and our thoughts lead to a, um, an attitude, right? And an attitude leads to an action Yep. <laughs> and an action determines your life. That's right. right? Yeah. And so it, it all starts with the way we think and our perspective. And sometimes you need to be listening to a podcast like this to see yeah. two grown men get emotional. And <laughs> two, there's four of us guys. <laughs> well, there's two of you that are really emotional at this moment. <laughs> Zach right. hardly ever yeah, re exactly. re re releases his full on emotion. Uh, yeah. uh, you know, yeah. it'll be an amazing yeah. day when that happens. When I've Zach seen breaks it. I've down seen it. I've seen it. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's it, it's an amazing feeling because all this is possible because of an industry where there's opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And regardless of where you find yourself in this industry, there's opportunity. But the opportunity itself will not be your salvation. No. It will not be your salvation. No. It's the people that you align with mm -hmm. and how you uh, let this information come to you and, and what you perceive about yourself, your opportunity, and the words that you let in and mm -hmm. the words that you let be validated in your life. Yeah. You know, all your life, you might have been told something. Yeah. You've got to change that pattern. Yeah. It's a delineation point, like today, yeah. from this today. day forward. Yeah. This day forward, I'm going to seek out people who speak differently into my life. Yeah. And those people can help me get to the next step. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, was, was Nate offered your salvation? Yeah. No, no, he wasn't. But he was one person yeah. that was put in your path that changed your life. And so I know that you'll forever be grateful for yeah. that relationship as a result of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now you can continue to point to other men, other people in your life that stepped in. Yeah. And I'll tell you, this path of being successful in sales, in life, in business, in marriage, in relationships, and finances, yeah. it all comes to, all comes down to who are you letting into your life, mm -hmm. the information that you're receiving, and how you process that, and what are you running toward? What are you running toward yes. constantly? Um, and then that that environment, you will change your environment by the people you seek. That's right. And like, I am so appreciative for these, these two guys. Yeah. I, I know you've gotten to know them over yes. the past couple of years and like I, we couldn't be running with better people. No. So if you're out there listening today to this podcast, you got to know that there's people that want you to win. We want you to win. Marlon wants you to win. Yeah. We're an incredible opportunity that is like none other right now. And, uh, but you need to find the group of people that yeah. can speak life into you to help you win. Can I, any, any, any closing thoughts yeah, before I'm, we wrap I'm up? Close. All right. Um, yeah, we're going to have an opportunity as well, Marlon. Yeah, you, you might want to close first, but <laughs> as you were talking, I'm looking 
into your eyes and I see the passion. I see that there was no Life Insurance Academy before it came into your brain. It didn't exist. You created that. And when you're saying that and I'm looking at you, you know what I'm thinking? 99% of my life I was always looking for the answer. The reality was I was the answer. If you're listening and you're driving in your car, you are the answer. Amen. You are the answer. Mm -hmm. There is no other answer. You are the answer. Wherever you're at and you're listening to this, the only thing that can change your life is you. That's it. I can, no one else can help me change my life. Just me. I had to get my butt up. I had to put my pants on one leg at a time. I had to go out into the world and say, I'll take it on. And if I fail, I'll get up again tomorrow. You're the only answer to your life. And when you realize that, the sky's the limit. The sky's the limit. So I just thought of that when you were talking. <laughs> I can't do a mic drop because it's on a, and you can't do one either because it's yeah, on a suspension. We could suspension. all just bop it on the top. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. Did you have a closing thought, Zach? I have that. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say just listening to this, man, um, winning what winning really is is it's it's really it's it's just the journey yeah of limitless hope that's good that's good man that's it's really it's good. really what it is the you know as long as you have hope and you know it's never a limit or a yes. cap to it yes you are winning yes yeah. that's right that's and, and if you feel hopeless at any point always know that there's someone who wants you to win mm -hmm. you can always pick up reach out to us at lifeinsuranceacademy.org. You can message us on any of our social media, Life Insure Acad, Roger at lifeinsuranceacademy.org. You can reach out and message us. We want to get you connected to the right people yeah. with organizations like Marlin, with whatever space that you're in, we can connect you with some pretty incredible people that want to help you win. Uh, thank you, man. Thank you, thank brother. You. Yeah, so what good to have you. Again. Thank you guys so if much. Listeners you guys. found value in that today. I, uh, I find value in you guys. And I, I was thinking earlier of in the Roman days, they had a triumvirate of the three heads, Marcus Aurelius and, and, and uh, Mark Anthony. I don't remember the rest because I didn't really pay attention to school. But, Snoopy. Um, Snoopy. <laughs> um, but you guys, the three heads here, um, it's always a pleasure. Oh, thanks, man. And I'm a better man because of you. Oh, I can honestly say that. Thank you, man, for joining us today. Thank yeah. you. Much well, guys, love. thanks for joining us for this uh, special unscripted mm -hmm. episode on winning in the Life Insurance Academy podcast. We'll see you next time. Have a great day.